Uh, in this video, I'll show you how to use a cell value for column values across multiple files. So what does that mean? Let's say we've got these files here. These all have the same format. This one is for California, Florida, and that one's for Maryland. Open up the California one and we can see what the structure looks like. And what it's going to be is we're going to have the same structure across these files. The first row is empty. The second row has a state in California. The third row is empty. We have what looks like a header field, full name, email, and these are our records, names and emails here. Now if I open up the other files, close this one, if I open up the other files, you'll see that it's going to be the same thing. Florida is going to be an example, but we have less records here. We only have two records here, but the format structure is the same. And what we want to do is we want to pull in these files. Let me bring up California again. So what we want to do is we want to have it where we can have our state here as one column and we'll have California here. California, control enter, and have that all, double click this, have it all be in this format where we have our extra column. And instead of doing that manually like I just did, we want to have that wholesale do it for everything when we import it and just do it automatically because we're going to assume we won't save that one. We're going to assume that there are other files that people might send us that don't have that name. It doesn't see this one is for Virginia VA and this one would be for New York. But some people might send us these files and we can't rely on the file name to get our state out of. We need to rely on what's in cell. In the individual cell here, in this case, it's always going to be uniform in cell B2 to provide that state information and put it into our column. Now, you might think, oh, that, this is something where I need to write VBA to do it, but we don't we really need to do that. We can actually use Power Query to do that. Here, I have a blank workbook. I'm just going to bring it in via Power Query. Go to Data, Get Data, From File, and From Folder. So I'm going to pull in those three files. So I have my folder path here. Click OK, and it's going to bring in the navigator. It will be nice in this instance if we were the ones that had a domain over the different files so all we need to do is just put the two letter instance there and it becomes really easy right you can see that all I need to do is combine them and Power Query is going to bring out that file name so Power Query is going to look at the first file we can see we have three files but it's going to look at the first file which is this California file that's fine here and I can click OK you can see the output that it's combined all the files in we do have to do a little bit of transformation and that's why we're going to use this transform file here to do that. So with this in mind, all we need to do is get rid of the first uh, two lines and promote that line. So I'll just go and click remove rows, remove the top two rows here, click OK, and then promote that one because that's the header. So use first row as header and we have our file here. So what's nice here now is that I can click on here and it'll change it. So the reason why there's an error here is because it enters in this last step, which I don't need. I don't need to have that change type. Remove that step. And here I can just say this is the state. Press enter. I want to remove that XLSS, so I can click here, or I should just go to transform here and replace values. Replace values. If anytime I see a dot XLSX. Just replace it with nothing, click OK, and now we have our states. Click on Home, click Close and Load, and here we have what we need. So that works if the value is in the file name itself, but what if it's all messed up like I showed you earlier? If I had this, copy this, and then put it into this folder where it's pulling it from, and refresh this, and you can see it doesn't work out well. because it took those names, it stripped it stripped off the dot .xlss, but it kept those, and that's not what we want. So here is the other method to do it. I'm going to Data, Get Data, from File, and from Folder like we did before. Click OK, and it will come back with the results of those particular files that are in that folder, and that's fine. It finds it, go to Combine, Combine and Transform Data and it's going to give me a sample of that one file, the first file it's going to find. I'll click on it to take a look at it. This is exactly what I will need. Click OK. 
and now the Power Query editor window will come up where I can do transformations on that sample file. So we're going to look at that sample file here and this is the one that we need to change and remember we had those other two files that we wanted to add into that folder that had these funky names instead of the two character state names so we couldn't do it the first way. The other way now we can do it is we need to do something similar here where we want to take out the blanks so remove row remove blank rows and that gets rid of that now we want to drill down to this particular value here because we know that it that row there's only two values or two columns they are the state and then the state actual state name so let's drill down to that one right click drill down and that provides us the state name that we know that is consistent amongst all the different files it's always going to be in that particular cell reference with that in mind this is, this is the value that we're going to give for our subsequent column with all the values in our state column. So with that, we need to bring back the table of values in this California column. So I'm going to click on this add step, and we're going to reference back this remove blank columns. Delete this value here and type in this, the name of this step. This is where it preceded that step where we drove down. Column 2 was where we drove down. This particular step name, remove blank rows, is the one that we need. So type removed and Excel. The, Intelli the IntelliSense was smart enough to figure out, yes, there is a value that it recognized from the applied steps. I'll select that because that's the way that it needs to be in the syntax. And here, now all I need to do is remove the state in California row because I don't need that anymore. I'm going to apply the California name later on. Go to remove rows, remove the first row, the top one row. So that's going to be that first row. And now this particular row is the header information. So we'll promote this one. Use first row as headers. And that's going to be our value there. And now I want to bring back that state name that I had in column two. Go to add column, custom column. And in my, let's say give this custom column name, we'll go just call the state. And what it needs to bring back as is that name that's the name of that step, which was column two. I should have named it something more descriptive, like title or something like that, but we'll call it column two. And then click OK, and we're going to have our state column with the name. So this was that drill down that we had. Now I can get out of the editing of the transformation sample file, our template, and go into the query where it combined all those three files. Now you can see there's an error here because that last step we don't need that in there because it's what it's doing is trying to change the type. It's looking for a, a data type like a text or new number values or currency and it's changing it for the columns. So I don't need that step. Click X to delete that and you can see it's come back with our the, the contents from those three files in this table. I don't need the source name here because I'll show you what happens next now once I add those other two files that are outside of these three. Right click, remove, and we have our files all combined into one table. Go to home, click close and load. It's going to load it on as a new worksheet. So this is fine right now because I've got it all in there in one table. But as you saw before, I had two other files that I might need to add on it. Maybe I'm getting this from other people and they don't have the same two character syntax nomenclature. So let's say I get these files from other people and they don't put VA or NY for the states. I've already planned for this and so I can just take these two files and dump it into that folder and because of the way that we made these steps all we need to do is just refresh it and it will recognize the file names within those cells and drill down to that state file name and put it in there. So we see we have Maryland and New York in there right now, right? And where is it pulling it from? Let me pull out one of those, New York or put, put in Virginia New York. So it took that cell B2. So the state name is always going to be in cell B2 for all of these files. And that's one thing you have to make sure of is that these the format is similar. The only thing that's changing is just the file names. Let's close this. And this works great if those that structure is there because maybe you get these files from a lot of people and you do this on a reoccurring basis. Uh, maybe daily or weekly and you don't want to always go in and change the file names you just want to put it into that folder click refresh and it just makes it like magic and put the names there 
and it just takes in the name from one particular cell and populates, repopulates it into your table in one column. So that's the way that we can extract values, uh, whether it's from the file name itself or if it's in the actual cell of the file and put it as different values in a column. And I show two examples of how that's done. So I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.